the information that is stored in, in the DNA molecule is pointing back to, an, to a designing intelligence. Now, why do I say that? Um, it has to do with what we know about the cause and effect structure of the world. Uh, our, our local hero in Seattle, uh, Bill Gates, says the DNA is like a software program, only much more complex than any we've ever created. And that's a very suggestive remark because we know that programs always come from programmers. And in fact, we know generally that information, whether it's in a computer program or a hieroglyphic inscription or in a headline in a newspaper or uh, a block of text in a book, information always comes from an intelligent source. So yes. when we find information in the DNA molecule, the most logical thing to conclude is that it too had an intelligent source. An intelligent source. An Due to this primitive level of science at the time, the imaginary scenarios of the theory of evolution were not looked upon as odd at all. Darwin's theses had a great impact on the scientific circles of his day. However, Darwin was still distressed. In the chapter, Difficulties on Theory, he wrote, If it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed, which could not possibly have been formed by numerous successive slight modifications, my theory would absolutely break down. As far as I'm concerned, I'm here to tell you, Michael, this morning and Jason, evolution is dead. Long live the creator. I'll tell you why. And I'm saying science says that as a scientist. Uh, evolution is dead because there's such thing as the minimal gene set concept. They've taken a mycoplasma, smallest organism, mycoplasma genitalium, which is the smallest organism that is known to exist, has 468 genes. A gene is a mix of uh, proteins, right? Mm -hmm. A list of so it can be a thousand, can be ten thousand amino acids. Okay, they're 486, and they've decided since year 2000, they've said let's take them, let's try to reduce it, because we have to start. If you're going to be an evolutionist, you have to start with zero genes and build up if you're going to go from hydrogen to human. And so, somewhere along the way, they said, well, let's take it down. In the year 2000, they published that even on paper, they couldn't go below uh, 200 genes. In on the 6th of January 2006, in Nature. They published that in reality, you could only go down to 397 genes. So, so, so a cell, which is where my specialty lies in my, my uh, scientific work, a cell needs a specific number of components to be functional. You have a membrane, but then you need to feed the membrane. So you have to have some mitochondria. You need a way of tagging the proteins. You need some DNA. So you need 397 things. Just the glucose cycle for getting en uh, energy takes over six different genes. So if you don't have one of them, you don't have any more energy coming to the cell. Darwin's fears proved to be true soon after his death. The laws of inheritance discovered by an Austrian botanist, Gregor Mendel, caused Lamarck's and Darwin's assertions to collapse. The science of genetics that developed at the beginning of the 20th century proved that it was not acquired physical traits but only genes that were transmitted to subsequent generations. This discovery made it clear that a scenario suggesting that acquired traits accumulated from generation to generation and generated different living species was implausible. In other words, there were no inheritable variations for Darwin's proposed mechanism of natural selection to choose from. Subsequently, the theory of evolution as advanced by Darwin has been collapsed early in the 20th century. All the other efforts by evolutionists in the 20th century could do nothing but only confirm that natural selection had no evolutionary power. A famous evolutionist, the English paleontologist Colin Patterson, admitted this when he said, no one has ever produced a species by mechanisms of natural selection. No one has ever got near it. And most of the current argument in neo-Darwinism is about this question. When it was clear that the mechanism of natural selection proposed by Darwin had no evolutionary power, evolutionists had to make a fundamental change in the theory. In addition to the concept of natural selection, they added a second mechanism called mutation. Mutations are alterations or distortions that take place in the DNA of living beings, mostly as a result of external effects such as radiation or chemical action. 
The theory of evolution now holds that living things are differentiated from one another and develop as a result of mutations. This cannot be true, for mutations only damage the information in the DNA and give only harm to a living being. No beneficial mutation has yet been observed either in nature or in laboratories. Since mutations do not add new genetic information, it is impossible for living beings to acquire new organs through mutations. Is new information being generated? That's what evolutionists have to come up with. Right. They have to have a mechanism that generates new, never before existing genetic information right. that can build all these bigger and better structures. Right. That, uh, that supposedly never existed before. Right. Right. Never before existing information. Right. In, in, back when, the, when there was only a single cell that gave rise to all the diversity of life, there wasn't information right. for skin and hair and heart and a brain and so on. Right. So you have to generate it somehow, according to evolution. Right. Now, Dr. Werner Gitt is an information specialist. Since we're talking about information, mm -hmm. we'll go to an information specialist. Okay. He wrote a book called In the Beginning Was Information that you and I both, uh, both love. Mm -hmm. um, and in his book, he says this, a code system is always the result of a mental process. It requires an intelligent origin or inventor. Mm -hmm. It should be emphasized that matter as such is unable to to generate any code. All experiences indicate that a thinking being voluntarily exercising his own free will, cognition, and creativity is required. Right. He goes on to say, there is no known law of nature, no known process, and no known sequence of events which can cause information to originate by itself in matter. Right. This is why Professor Richard Dawkins, one of the most renowned advocates of the theory of evolution of our day, hesitates when he is asked to give a single example that increases the genetic information. Professor Dawkins, can you give an example of a genetic mutation or an evolutionary process which can be seen to increase the information in the genome? The truth is very evident. Life has such a complex design that can never come about by chance. And I suppose it's possible that you might find evidence for that if you look at the, um, at the detail, details of biochemistry, molecular biology, you might find a signature of some sort of designer. Wait a second. Richard Dawkins thought intelligent design might be a legitimate pursuit? Richard Dawkins is his name. Uh, arguably the world's most famous atheist. I don't know how you would test for that, but uh, maybe we'll ask him. So, uh, right off the bat, what's wrong with, in your opinion, with believing in a god, regardless of who the god is? I think it's false. Uh, I think that it's um, a matter of belief without evidence. And I suppose it's possible that you might find evidence for that if you look at the, um, at the detail, details of biochemistry, molecular biology, you might find a signature of some sort of designer. Wait a second. Richard Dawkins thought intelligent design might be a legitimate pursuit? Um, and that designer could well be a higher intelligence from elsewhere in the universe.